Hey, good morning. Welcome to Thursday at the Huddle. We've been in the study this week of the blind man that Jesus healed um, by spitting on the ground and making some mud, putting on his eyes and telling him to go show himself to the high priest. And where I want to pick up the story this morning, um, just to refresh us, is in John chapter 9. And uh, this rejection by the religious leaders that sends this man back to Jesus. So, so let's look at verse 32 of John chapter 9. Let's just start there. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And this is part of the debate that Jesus is healing as a sinner. And if this is saying if someone is, is not from God, they cannot do these things. And they answered this man. This is, of course, this man's rebuke to the religious leaders. And, and they asked this man, uh, or they answered his rebuke with, you were born in utter sin. Would you teach us? And here's what they do. They cast him out. And now we pick it up in verse 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. Having found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? And he answered, who is he, sir, that I may believe him? And Jesus said, you have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Do you believe, Jesus asked. And this man says, I believe. And he worships him. You know, this, this man uh, needed physical healing. But of course, like so many others that Jesus heals of their physical infirmities, he also needed this spiritual um healing and Jesus offers it. Um, you know, it's interesting that the blind religious leaders who were spiritually blind um, ask the question, are we blind also? And, and the blind man's answer, who is now seeing, said, if you would admit that you need light, you could receive enlightenment. But since you claim to see when you are really blind, you remain blind. A poet tells of his pity for a blind man walking with a cane and speaking with him, the poet began to realize that the blind man possessed far greater insight than he and concluded, I, not he, was blind. And I think that's what this blind man now saying to these religious leaders, I was blind, but now I see. You thought you saw, but you're actually blind. And so that leads us to the question of what is some of the spiritual blindness that people are suffering from? Well, some are blind to the simplicity of the gospel. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, he said, The God of this age has blinded the mind of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Oftentimes, spiritually blind people, not oftentimes, probably all the time, spiritually blind people can never recognize their need for salvation or understand how someone dying on the cross can atone for their sins, nor can they grasp the salvation as a free gift, free from human merit. Oftentimes, people are blind to the simplicity of the gospel. Sometimes, we're blind to our own spiritual maturity. You know, in 2 Peter 1, 9, um, Peter talks about um, these things that you can add to godliness, uh, some spiritual virtues that you can compound with one another. And he finishes that list off by saying this, but if anyone does not have these things in increasing measure, they are nearsighted and blind and forgotten that they have been saved from their sins. Peter calls them nearsighted and blind. Sometimes we can be blind to our own spiritual maturity. Blind is the believer who neglects to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can often also become blind to a heavenly perspective. Paul declares in 1 Corinthians, 2, or 1 Corinthians 2, 14, The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. The man that does not have the indwelling of the Spirit does not understand what comes from that spirit. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. What God wants to teach to the spirit cannot be understood because these things are spiritually discerned. And so sometimes we are blind to the heavenly perspective and we see only from our human or earthly or fleshly perspective. 
The Pharisees, they would rather remain blind than have their man-made Sabbath regulations changed or altered. They could not see things as God sees them. Another form of blindness is blindness to our own faults, right? Jesus warned against the plank eye syndrome where we uh, talk about the sliver in our brother's eye while failing to see or failing to recognize the plank in our own eye. Oftentimes, it's easy to recognize the shortcomings of others, but we fail to introspect and allow the Spirit to make us aware of the failings within ourselves that we need to address. Like Dr. Dre said, sometimes you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Sometimes we're blind to money. You know, Paul says it's the love of money that becomes the root of all kinds of evil. And some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Oftentimes we see ourselves as generous people or we're not caught up by our possessions um, and we fail to recognize that it is our possessions that possess us. Sometimes we're blind by hate. Jesus said in his dissertation on the Sermon on the Mount and the epistle of John and 1 John 2 tells us, but whoever hates his brother is in darkness and walks around in darkness and they don't know where they're going because the darkness has blinded them. Sometimes we're blinded by hate. And sometimes we're blinded by apathy. Um, to the lukewarm church in Laodicea in Revelation 3.17, Jesus says, You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing, but you don't realize that you are wretched, poor, and blind, Jesus says. There's many forms of spiritual blindness, and our sight grows dim as we lose sight of heaven. As we fail to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, that spiritual blindness, that darkness comes from, from the peripheral, and then it eventually removes all spiritual sight. That's why we need the light of Christ to come from the Spirit and to give us keen awareness where we are becoming blind. So maybe that should be our prayer this morning. Spirit, open my eyes that I may see. Open my eyes, open the eyes of my heart that I can see clearly Jesus. Let's just pray that this morning. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit, we just pray with the realization that often we're not aware of our own spiritual blindness. So Lord, we do pray, open the eyes of our heart that we can see clearly Jesus. We can see clearly his example. We can see clearly the life he lived, that we can live a life worthy of his gospel. And this is our prayer today on this Thursday and all God's people said, amen. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow to wrap things up. Ready, break. <laughs>